Hello and welcome back to the Artify Codecast. Today I'm going to be incorporating the input and output JS libraries into Artify, testing them out, trying to get them to work, hopefully getting them to work, and then uh, building Artify. So I know that's a big, that's a lot of stuff. It's very hopeful. We might not get to it all, but let's see how far we can make it. So last night um, I finished up the input.js library, you know, finished. I mean, who knows if it's actually working, but the last thing I worked on was this, where I have, uh, I use event delegation to attach a, a click handler, handler to body that looks for an element that has both a data input key and a data input value on it. Um, it gets the element, it gets this element that was clicked on uh, right here. It gets the attribute um, data uh, uh, input key from it. And then it looks up the closest choice element that has a value that e that's equal to that key name. And then it sets the attribute of that choice element the um, data output type to object, and it sets the key uh, with the dash cased key name um, equal to the attribute value, which is equal to the uh, data input value of the clicked on element. Um, so the one thing, uh, so yeah, this, this all looks good, I think. Um, yeah, that all makes sense. So there are a couple more complicated um, things in input.js though, and those are the input component watcher and the input save button watcher. And these both uh, sync output data attribute values. Okay, so the real problem is with this one. So this is also something I worked on yesterday. And what I do is, um, I get all the data, I, I flatten the data, uh, you know, from the source element. I loop through each piece of data. I get the camel case key name, convert it to dash case, convert it to an attribute, uh, also create a selector string, get all the matching elements, uh, including uh, if it's the, if the target element itself matches it, um, and then loop over all of those and set the attribute of the, um, you know, to the constructed attribute name using the value from uh, flat data. Now the problem with this, and it's not a huge, huge, huge problem, but it's a, it's a pretty big problem, but it's this. So if we go into output.js and we go into parse node, um, when we get, we have this function get data from node. And um, what this does is pretty simple, right? It's just going to dash to camel case the key name and the attribute value is going to be equal to the attribute value, right? Plain and simple. Well, not quite. If the attribute value starts with a period, we're going to actually um, treat this as a different type of value and we're going to use this function to get the actual value and what this function does is <coughs> um, takes the element uh, that we're looking at and takes the uh, the string which is the attribute value but now we're calling it a location string it uh, you know strips out a bunch of extra spaces from it if it has extra spaces which it shouldn't um, it uh, gets the first argument, which is the selector from this string, and the second argument, which is the element attribute. And then we, uh, if the selector is just a dot, then we just use the current element um, and uh, to, to get the element attribute. And then if not, we're going to search the current element uh, for the selector. And then we're going to um, get the value that we're looking for by checking to see if there's a target element. And if there is, 
getting the element attribute that was the second argument in the location string or default to inner text. So a lot of the a lot of cases this this is more going to look like this. So like the first argument is just going to be like a you know a div with um, you know the attribute on it so uh, data o key name David right and then the second argument is going to be something like dot right that's the most common case and what that means is uh, or actually geez um, oh right okay so that's going to be a dot too so the the um, and then we're going to have the the name in here sorry my bad okay so um, this dot is just gotten from here right that's all we're doing um, that's all we're doing uh, when we look up the value uh, when we're when we're looping looping through each attribute um, so and the dot means get get the value from the current element and then we don't have a second argument here right so we could have inner text here and a space in between these um, to, to denote that they're separate arguments <clears throat> and this means the current element and get its inner text but if we leave out inner text it's going to default to inner text so this is the most common case i think it's just a dot and so yeah this is just going to return like for example, an array with a dot in it, right? And so the selector is going to end up being equal to this, and the element attribute is going to not exist, and so it's going to be undefined. So then when we go in here, we're going to use the current element, so we can ignore this part. We're going to use the current element um, as the target element. So we have a target element, and then we're going to get the element attribute which is going to default to inner text. And since we don't have it in this case, since it is undefined, as we just said here, right, there's no second uh, array element, we're going to default to inner text. So it's going to look something like this. Um, or, I don't know, we could just have like the own. And it's going to look like that, right? And then um, return type of is is the value a string? Uh, if so, um, trim it. Trim that string. If not, return an empty uh, string. Okay, so that um, makes sense. The problem here is that. Um, get data from node right get data from node get data from node yeah this is going this is not what we're doing here so uh, dun, 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 dun. but we do get it here right so this this uses get data from node so what's the problem exactly maybe there is no problem we set the attribute. Okay, this is the problem. So there's a possibility here. Um, so like, let's pretend that we have a div and we have data o key title equal to uh, the jungle book. And um, let's actually put the jungle book in here, and let's put a dot in here, and let's just add this second argument, even though we don't need it. So um, the the problem here is that okay, so we've gotten the attribute name, and we've actually this is the actual value we're looking for because we we looked it up get using you know, this function, which does use parse node, um, you know, which does get the, you know, the location key value. But 
what if it's setting a location key value, right? So this is an example of a location key value that's being set. And in this case, we don't just want to set it on the attribute, right? Because we're going to overwrite, we're going to end up overwriting this. So if our new book title is um, The Princess Bride, then now we have this attribute right here, and then we have this name, and they're mismatched. So that's not what we want at all, right? Because now when we, when we go through our DOM in order to assemble all our data, this is the value we're going to get, and this is the value the user is going to see. So it's actually the worst case scenario. Um, so we need to respect the, this, um, this special attribute. And we need to say, you know, um, hey, if the if the value starts with a period, we need to do something different. Um, okay, so let's write it here, and then we'll decide later if we want to split it out into a different uh, function. So we'll do. Um, so if, so let's get the attribute value first. Do I have, um, value specified here anywhere? Um, no. Okay. So we'll say value equals this. And that should work, um, because we're getting the the camel case key name right here, then we have the flat data from up here. Um, so we have the value, and we're going to say if value zero, so the first um, letter in value, if it equals a dot, we want to handle this uh, differently. So we kind of want to do something similar to this, but like in, re in reverse, I guess. Um, I guess what we could do, so are we importing output.js? Yeah, we are. But output.js is not exposing parse node or get location key. Um, I kind of want to put like a set location key value here just because they have so much overlapping functionality. And then in index.js, I can, you know, import parse node, I guess. And I can like import this from it. And then I can export it. I don't. Th I think that's not how you're, how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> I think um, this function. I think ordinarily index.js is just supposed to have your your imports and your exports. I'm pretty sure. Okay, but let, yeah, let's write it here. Okay, so set location key value. Um, so. Um, so we, we're going to want the element, right? And we're going to want the the location string, and we're going to want the value. Um, so let's use it here, location set location string, location key value. Okay, so we're going to do this, and the element is going to be this. The location string is going to be this, or no? Yeah. Oh, we don't need the value. Okay, wait, 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 wait. 
Um, we do need the, the value. Oh, I get it. 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 Okay. So this is the value, and we want so this. The, we want something different. So we want the um, the target elements. Uh, the target element attribute value. Okay. Okay, so we have a, a matching element. Um, let's say match, I guess, matching element attribute value and we're going to want to get the attribute for I think it's just I think it's just this but I'm not sure I have to think it through real quick so yeah this should this is going to match what's on this right and this is going to give us the value so we can say like for example you know uh, select selector and then uh, inner text okay so matching element uh, so let's say, let's start with this because this is the important part. So the attribute value of the matching element. Um, the um, value to set is going to be this. Uh, Let's say current <laughs> current attribute value. Yeah, that works. That that kind of centers me a little bit better in this in this area of the code. So we have the current attribute value and we have the value to set, and then we say, hey, is the current attribute does the current attribute value start with a dot? If so, let's set a location key value. So now we're going to have the matching element, the um, current attribute value and the value to set. And our else is going to be, hey, just do it regular. Um, it, do, it doesn't matter, right? It's just going to be this and then this. Okay, so now set location key. So let's copy these uh, arguments. And the second one is actually, we're going to keep this location string. Um, and we can rename this value in this context. And yeah. OK. So we're going to, um, let's just copy all of this. And so we got location string. That looks good. We're going to get the selector and the element attribute, we're going to get the target element using the selector, great. We're going to get the, we don't care about the current element value. What we care about here is um, if target element exists, then target element uh, equals so this um, this uh, attribute 
uh, which defaults to inner text, is going to be set to the final value. And uh, we could trim this, but I don't think that's necessary. I think it's nice to have it trimmed. Okay. And I just want to make sure, I've looked this up like a lot of times, but I just want to make sure, yeah, okay, okay. Because I, I know there's like another function that's very similarly named to that, that they didn't use because it interfered, I think. Anyways, so, okay, so now we have some very similar code. Um, Okay, so um, how about like get data from location string? Um, I think this could be named a little bit better. No, that's fine. Um, and we're going to pass in the element and the location string. And we're just gonna like, so so the, these are both the same right here, right? And then it splits off after that. So what we're gonna do is um, cut that out, paste it in here, <laughs> delete the second instance of it, and return uh, a tuple, which is the first time I've ever done this. Is there a reason to? Like not use an object? I think using an object works just as well. So I'm going to do an object. Okay, so we, what we want is the target element. We definitely want that. And I believe we want the element attribute. And do we want the selector? Do we care about the selector outside of this? We really don't. Okay, so we'll call uh, this and we'll pass in this and we'll get back this. So we'll get the element attribute and the target element from this helper function um, repeated code. Uh, we'll just say like helper function encap encapsulates repeat. Uh, I don't know. Has has repeated code. Fine. Okay, so. That makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. We get the element attribute and the target element. Uh, we could have it return the current value too, but this is it's kind of unique to this function. Um, In, until I come up with a better na name or documentation for this, I'm just gonna say that. Okay, and then we're gonna have uh, this here. Um, bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that should work, I think. So set location key value. We got the element we want to uh, set it on. We get the location string, and we get the value we want to set. We um, use the element and the location string to get the element attribute and the target element. If there's a target element, we set the attribute defaulting to inner text to the value to value uh, trimmed. 
and then here we're just going to get the value from it. Okay, so then let's um, let's export this here. Set location key value, very similar to the one above it, um, and then in here, I think we can yeah we can do this. So we're just the only reason I'm wondering if we can do this is because this imports parse node. So I just wonder how it's going to like untangle all this code. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, and this is going to be um, set location key value. So now there's a slight, is there a slight, slight problem? Yeah, there's a slight problem. Okay, so um, I want to search all of my projects for this. Okay, that's weird. Um, so, the, I mean, at the very least, it should appear in, in input.js, which is right here. Maybe it's, it's still searching. I'll just leave it for a second. Okay, so, yeah, I just, I need to change this everywhere so that it, it's like this, and then we can get the set location key value from it too, and and we can use it there. And we want to uh, export this. Um, I don't know. I guess, yeah, there are a lot of like node modules and stuff. So it's probably searching through like gigabytes of, of stuff. Um, the other option is we could just, I have all the files open here. So I could just like, can I search all open? Find in files. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't need to change this one because this is actually a different version of of output. Yeah, that's a different ver. That's the different version. This is a different version. This is a different version. Okay, it looks good. Um, it looks like we're not really using it anywhere. Let's see if no, the search didn't turn up anything. Okay, so now we have that the get data from and set location. So this is the important one that we're working with right now. Um, okay, so if it starts with a, a dot, we know it's a location key, and we're gonna set the location key value by using the current attribute value as the location string, the matching element as the element to set it on, and the value to set. Perfect, okay, so that's the one thing I really needed to take care of before continuing. So, um, 
we'll say like added this guy and then well where's our other one that was an output what about input oh why didn't it show that there were changes that's weird okay so um we'll say like using using uh that in okay using the new function okay so now it should be uh, ready to use let's um, let's try it out so normally so right now I have tests for output.js, copy layout, um, and switch.js, but they're all in this data.js folder, and this is kind of an old folder filled with not necessarily up-to-date code, so we no longer want to update the code or the tests in here. Um, what I'm tempted to do, but I'm not going to, is to transfer for some of the tests from data.js out into these other libraries. Um, and the only reason I'm not going to do that right now is because I, I know that they work as they are for the purpose that we need. And I'm not planning on releasing any of these libraries right now. So I'm just playing around, having fun. And I really want to get started on this Artify code, which is the main reason. So let's, um, let's go into the Artify code. And um, let's look at the dependencies we have. So we have switch.js. I think we do not have output, right? We don't have output anywhere, and we don't have input anywhere. And then what's the other one? Copy, oops, copy layout we should have, and switch we should have, as well as query.js. Yeah, okay. So let's install some of our new um, code. So we're going to do an npm install input.js and then we're also going to install uh, output.js ah. Okay Oh no. <laughs> what what is this? Dev dependency. What how did I Oh. Wait, what is it? It's so hard. What is this telling me about the package? Okay. Okay, well, I don't know what that's saying. So, whatever. Let's see if it works <laughs> anyways. Okay, so let's go into, um, let's do an npm run dev, I think that's what it's called. Let's make sure, yeah, there it is. Okay, and then we're gonna go to uh, localhost 777. And last I checked, we didn't have any errors here. Okay, we don't have a, a fav icon, that's fine for now. Let's go to our bundles page. Okay, cool. So no errors so far, but that's only because we're not including the new libraries yet. <clears throat> so let's go into our views and let's go into bundles and let's also open up our JavaScript code. 
So we have modules and vendor, okay, and app. Okay, cool. Is that really the only thing in here? Okay. Um, okay, so we have a working bit of code right here. So we we made this work the last time, but we, none of our other toggles work. So we could make those work, but the first thing I'm interested in is, hey, does our do our does our input library work, right? So let's um, let's try it. So um, it's not it's not going to work. I don't want to get your hopes up. Um, okay. So let but yeah, who knows, right? Um, let's try it. So I want to actually put that down there, and I want these to be their own thing because this is kind of like I, my own kind of like web app, my ideal web app code. Um, so output JS and input JS. I'm not going to explain what they do right here quite yet. Um, I do, however, want to make sure that I'm calling the right functions for them. So as far as this one goes. I don't think I actually need this one yet. Yeah, I don't need it yet. I, I'm just, I just want to test input.js. And for this one, all I want to do is call uh, init. So let's import init from I hate that these are single quotes. I always use double quotes. I don't know. People frown on that sometimes, but I just like it. It feels more real. So, but yeah, this whole file uses single quotes, so we'll use single quotes. Okay, so import init from input uh, JS, and then we'll just run init right here. Yeah, I just realized this is a bad name. So let's... Uh, Maybe we'll do like input. I mean, I was trying to think of like last night, like what what do I call this library if I just input it as uh, if I just um, include it as is. So I think um, I actually don't know if I can do this. If I'm just export, I think I can't. No, I think I have to do like import star as that. Okay, well, let's try it, right? There's no time like the present. So we'll do that. There's no way that worked. Um, <clears throat> oh. No, I do have I have webpack running. Do 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 do. I have no idea what's happening. Let's just try this then. Oh, I'm probably running into an error here. Okay, so let's clear this out. Let's get it to recompile, I guess. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to the top. What's it saying? Warning, export default was not found in input Choice watcher. 
Okay, so if I go into my input.js and I go in, oh, okay. So in here, yeah. Um, okay, so let's, uh, Yeah, so we've got the input choice watcher, watcher input component watcher, uh, input save button watcher, and we just, we don't want to do any of these things until we call init for some reason. No, I mean, it makes sense, right? We don't want to, uh, we want to have the option of when to. Um, so we'll do like export default function <coughs> okay we'll do that there we'll do this um, there and we'll do that there okay so now, did it recompile? The mode option has not been set. I, I mean, I'm tired of getting that. So I'm just, I guess I'll just set it. Um, okay, so go in here. Go to webpack, and I think I can just set it like here. Development. Oh, and I need to restart because it's a change to the webpack. Okay, so module build failed. So this, so let's close all this stuff. Um, let's open up this and export defaults from isn't currently enabled. Think support for the yeah. I am not an expert in this stuff. Um, what's going on here? So this is going to be included here and here. Oh, okay. So the problem is that uh, this is export, but not export default. Because I'm just including it here without the um, destructuring. Okay. Six, seventy-six. Huh? And man, <laughs> running into these kinds of problems just kind of, <laughs> it makes me want to play video games. I'm just like, eh, whatever. I just want to go have fun. Okay, so, module, uh, yeah, okay. Here, unexpected token, expected semicolon on 676. Well, that's line six. 
76, you expected a semicolon right there. Huh? Okay. Well, but, um, I use export default there and it seems to work fine. Oh, is it because it's a name? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Don't, please don't laugh at me. Oh my god. That's awful. Okay. So, uh, what does this say? Is this a new error? I can't even tell. What? There's nothing? It works? Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, I don't know. Ex exporting the functions correctly. Um, starting to work on uh, integrating input.js. It wasn't a lot of code to, to commit, but whatever. Okay, so let's see if we have, let's just like call window init equals init. Okay, awesome. So that's exactly what we want. Um, oof, okay, so we know that it's calling this and it's not running into any major issues, which is great um, because all we're really doing in these uh, three files is attaching event handlers. So they shouldn't, you know, nothing should happen until uh, we click on the page. So I guess, yeah, let's try clicking on the page. Oh. I clicked on the page, nothing happened. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, let's click here. Perfect, nothing happened. Okay, so now is the fun part. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps it's the fun part. Okay, so we got this title thing. This is a lot of code, David. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is, hasn't been rewritten yet. Okay, that's why it's a lot of code. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, where is my new code? We got the... Jeez, oh, where is it? It's up here. Cover... Oh, name. Here we go. The bundle name. So this is much less code. Uh, it's still a decent amount, and it's a little confusing if you don't know what's what's happening. Okay, so um, what do we, we want to attach here? Let's look at our example code right here. So um, on this stuff, So we want to make sure any uh, output keys are set here. So we want to say data <coughs> o key. I feel like so cool right now, by the way. I mean, it's probably not going to last very long. But for, for right now, I feel really good. OK, so bundle name. So this is going to like compile down to bundle name and it's going to have this value, right? Because we're, we're defaulting to the inner text and we're saying the current element. So this is going to go into the current element, grab its inner text, and assign it to this, um, this name here. Cool, cool, cool. OK, so now we got that set up. Now we want to set up the inline edit. So if we go to, uh, I think we can just search for this. 
Yeah. Okay. So this is the other section. What's happening? Okay. Data switches, data switch on, data switch stop, data switch off. Okay, and inline edit. So this is the one that's going to be switched on. So we want the data I sync to be on here, the data input sync. And then uh, what do we have here? But we don't need any of this stuff because that's all for the choice. Um, we need this. Okay, so let's uh, find our input. We got it here. Um, I'm really hoping this is going to work. Okay, so we're going to do data o type object and data o key bundle name and it's going to be a dot and a value. Huh, okay. So if this works, when I click this, the input is going to be filled with this text. Oh, I killed. That hurts. Okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. So what is, um, what is happening in here? It's a log. And let's just say, on, let's make sure that it's triggering. Yeah, so yeah, we're getting two. That makes sense. Okay, so let's... Um, let's uh, I guess we could just put it in here. It's a quick test. What? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah, okay, single line. That was weird. Okay, so I guess it just wasn't done recompiling. Okay, so that um, that makes sense. I'm sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, I can actually close my window. One second. Okay, so that should be a tiny bit quieter. Okay, so we know we're getting here. I guess let's put a debugger here and go on an adventure. Um, so we'll refresh. Okay, so we got the debugger. Oh my goodness. Can we... I guess I have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, that works. Okay, so what do we got here? I just want to like check out the switch object. Um, it's bundle name. Uh, it's, it's not on. <laughs> That's weird. It should be on. Yeah, that's something we gotta fix, but not right now. Auto is auto, custom name is inline edit. Okay, that looks all good. Action object. Or actually let's just Yeah, that yep, yeah, that's the right one. Okay. Bundle name. Bundle name. We can see it's it's this one up here. I hate how you can't scroll. I guess it makes sense, but I I don't like how you can't scroll. Um, so if I click on this, yeah, that's the one I think that we expect, bundle name, type on. Okay, so 
that looks good. Let's continue through this. Um, this is going to be that. This is going to be that. So let's step into this. Oh, geez. What? Okay. I have kind of have to, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm just like not very experienced with, with those, with these tools. Okay. So we're going to have a debugger here. And then we're going to click. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, this isn't defined yet until we go through it. Okay. Nested output data is undefined. So source element, that's weird. So that shouldn't happen. Source element has a data of, okay. That's annoying. but it makes sense. It's because we didn't put a type on it. So we didn't put a type of object on it. I wish that I could just have this on it, like any data okay, but unfortunately I have to have a type on it. And the reason is, is because, okay, so like say I'm going through the DOM and I'm saying, are you Parsable? Are you, are you, <laughs> are you Parsable? Are you Parsable? Uh, parsable. Like, can you be parsed? Um, it, uh, what I would have to do is for every element, I'd have to loop through all of the attributes and say, okay, does one of the attributes start with this? And instead of that, right now, all I have to do is say, um, hey, are you... Um, sorry, just thinking about something real quick. Um, do you have this attribute? And then that's a quick answer, right? Because I don't have to loop through all of the other attributes. I just have to check for this one. <clears throat> so we'll save that. We'll refresh here. Let's click that. Let's continue. Oh, it, clo it made it close. That's annoying. OK, so let's get rid of our debugger. <clears throat> See if we fix the issue. <gasps> oh my goodness. And if I do this, oh, I don't, I didn't set up the save button yet. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I guess it's not that exciting. No, it's super exciting. <laughs> I love this. This is, I love this. Okay, 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 okay. Let's do this. So we got this. We got this. We got this. And we're going to say data input, save. And that's the final piece of the puzzle. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. So if I do one, haha, <laughs> it worked. I know it didn't seem like it worked because uh, <laughs> it reloaded the page. Um, uh, what do I want to do? I want to say, uh, da, 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 da. pull, what? Why is, um, okay, wait. So, okay, it reloaded the page because it's a button. And it doesn't have a prevent default on it. Um, and I have a submit on it. Yeah, so let's get rid of that submit. Let's make this a, an anchor and let's put a prevent default on it. And Backdrop, I think for this, I think instead of like attaching all of the this stuff here, what I can do is um, up here, sorry for the distraction, but this is just a tiny bit important.
um, because it affects how I'm going to write the code from now on. So I'm going to say no auto. So it's not going to auto close. So I don't need to have a stop here. And then I just, oh no, 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 because then I'd have to have, yeah, okay. Well, okay, let me just spell it out. So then I'd have to have uh, data um, switch actions um, equal to bundle name off here. And so um, so I'd have to like have one of these for every single thing. So if there's like, you know, an undle name, right, perfect example, uh, I'd have to have one for that too, right? And so then if I was editing the, you know, timeline item, I'd have to have that uh, one for that too. Okay, so let's go back to how it was. Sorry, I just thought I could maybe simplify the code. Um, okay, so we have the save button. I am a little bit nervous, but no, I think this will work. Um, do we put data switch actions on this? I think if we don't, it's just going to stay open. So if I put two, why did it close? It should, oh, because the buttons are outside of this inline edit. So it's auto closing. Okay. So I don't need to close on the uh, cancel button either. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. And then if I look at this code, right? So this, um, this has a data output key on it, bundle name, and it's equal to the dot. So it's going to get the inner text for it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's run it through the output.js code real quick. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so we're going to import uh, something. Like, you know, it's like get, get data from root node, I think. Get data from root node from uh, output JS and let's window get data uh, get data okay so now if I get data I have that let's get it from Wait, do I have, what is this? Okay. Okay. So it's not, it's not a query JS or bling or whatever. Um, which I could make it, I think, right? Um, do I have query, do I import it? I don't import it here. I should make it like a global or something. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I do know how to do that, but it's complicated. Okay, so we're just going to have to get the, we'll just do like a document. Or we could just do document body, right? Okay, cool. <gasps> oh no, why didn't it work? Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so what's happening here is it's going through the whole DOM, and it's, uh, so it's looking in here, right? That this like on page element and it's saying boom I got you this is you know it's you know bundle name is the single character bundle but then it's keeping it's going to keep looking and it's going to the inline edit components and it's saying hey you guys got anything and they're like yeah we got an empty string for this because the value of that is empty right now if I click on this right it's going to fill it up right so now if I do it it's going to work. But that's not what I want, because this is still getting the bundle name from the wrong place. It's getting it from 
this uh, inline edit input, which might not be the worst thing in the world, but really what I want to do is get it from, so I never want to search these component, these inline edit components. So I could attach something to this, like, I, I actually kind of like this idea, data o, data output ignore, something like that. And then if I go into, so let, let me just experiment with this idea. If I go here, can element be parsed, can element data Okay, so so I think it's very simple. I think it's just like if current element has attribute data o ignore return. Because that's just going to stop the, the loop. Um, so I'll just say like stop the recursive search if you reach and ignore element. Okay, so let's try it uh, one more time. Hopefully that recompiled even though it's in a separate file. Uh, I think it works. Let's uh, console log here. Yep, <laughs> so it just takes multiple refreshes. I have the cache disabled, so it's weird. That's so annoying going through it like this. Disable cache when DevTools is open. Okay, well, anyways, it works. That's awesome. Stop recursive search if you reach an ignore element. Um, so I like that. But like the better thing to do here would just to be like, hey, search this contain. Uh, no, <laughs> um, is to like have like a bundles, I think, and then we can put all these bundles, or it's just one actually. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so much code. Oh wait, no, we reached the inline edit. Okay, backdrop. Okay, here we go. That's a bundle. Is that a lot of code? That's not that much. That's not that much. So document query selector and then we'll do bundles. And that's, that's I think that's more how you want to do it. But you know, just to be safe, you could have you know the data uh, output ignore um, thing, right? I mean, it's just a, a little sad because it's it's an extra action that it's performing on every single um, element in in the DOM. <laughs> uh, so, like, let's look at this again. Um, right here. Uh, no. Output JS index, yeah, this is it. Okay, so yeah, so we're checking the attribute. So let's do a quick test. So let's, um, this has a lot of attributes. Let's search for an attribute on it that it doesn't have. So it has to go through all of them. <clears throat> and let's time it. Um, so we got uh, has attribute, and we're gonna say like uh, la, 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 la. 
um, 0 0.03 milliseconds. So, like, if we, I mean, I know it doesn't work this way, <laughs> but, uh, or, but I, I think it probably should, right? Like, why shouldn't it work this way, right? So if I'm searching over a thousand, how long is that going to take? That's going to take 34 milliseconds, and that's totally unacceptable. But if I'm just searching over, I mean, I, I don't think that's like, a, that's not a lot of elements, right? I mean, I guess the more common case, so like how many, how many, um, let's do like a document, query, selector, all, and search for uh, everything. So 281. So like, I mean, this is only one bundle. So it is actually going to be, you know, going over, uh, you know, 281 times, say you have five bundles on the page, that's 49 milliseconds just to check to see if it has a uh, this attribute. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this should actually be has attribute. It shouldn't be get attribute because I don't need I don't need the value. I don't use it anywhere. Okay, so yeah, I don't I don't know if I like this uh, feature. It's like a convenient, nice to have feature. But I just I'm not sure. I think I would rather just have people I mean, so the one nice thing about it is like say you have a page filled with all kinds of data and you and like it's all in different components you don't want to have to like loop over this area loop over this area loop over this area and then like merge them together and then send those to the server and you don't you know, also i mean the point of this library is not that you like loop over one and send that to the server loop over another send that to the server i mean i guess that would be fine right if you had one for each like area of the page and you just sent that to the server it's not the worst thing in the world um but if you had that, if you had a bunch of components, all you would have to do is add this little data ignore tag. And then it's not going to uh, continue. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think, is there like a more performant way of doing this? I mean, there's probably a more performant way of doing this. I'm going to just leave it out for now. And yeah, and hopefully that's fine. But I know I'll, I'll, I know that I can add it back in if I need it. But for now, you know, just doing the call on uh, on bundles is fine, right? We refresh the page. We know that the value is empty. We get the bundles. We're still gonna get the right value. Okay, so that was awesome. I'm pretty happy with the progress. Like am amazing progress uh, we made. Um, next time I'm going to go through this uh, this code and replace all the old um, syntax with the new the new switch.js syntax, the new output syntax, the new input syntax. Rewrite a bunch of the code. Um, it's probably going to be uh, later today, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, but I'm happy that we got the input.js library working today. I guess the other thing I want to do, if I could like add it to the to-do, is <clears throat> so I want to get like all of the 
all of the switch copy layout output and input code working but there's this one thing with the uh, input JS code where I just want to call back whenever a save button is clicked. So I think that's the one other thing. And I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do that next time. But uh, so like here, I just want this to have like a like on save button clicked, something like that. So I'm going to delete that for now because we're in a working state right now. So I'm happy about that. Um, but anyways, when the save button is clicked, the reason I want that to, to trigger a callback is because at that point is when I want to parse all of the data in the in the uh, in the DOM or you know in the bundle section, and then send that to the server. Okay, so. Um, Uh, oh, we got to get rid of this because it's not, it doesn't work. So there's no point in having it. Yeah. So I think the, um, as time goes on, I'll probably improve or try to improve the performance of the output JS library just because it's looping through every element. So every action it does on that really, really matters. I think even, so if I, I, I actually am very curious about this right now. If I go in here, so I just want to see like, how does this perform? So let me get something with like a, a lot of children. Is it this or this? I think this. Um, Well, let's see how many children this has. It just has five. Um, I think the timeline is a better... That's the price. So I think the timeline's in. <laughs> Where's the timeline? Uh... Okay. I don't know why. Okay, so if I do this and I say just like, you know, push this into an array. Oops. And I do a console time st Okay. So I'll just copy this and refresh. Okay, and now if I do um,
So it's that versus that. So about 0.1 milliseconds. So it adds like, I don't know, 0 0.03 milliseconds. So um, let's go into our uh, old test code, <coughs> which I believe is in parse DOM. So this is old, old code, code but it's good for, for now, because uh, all it, uh, it runs is tests for parsing the DOM. So let, I just want to see if this simple change can make a big difference in how this code is. So yeah, actually, um, let's re rerun it real quick. So we're getting around like, uh, I don't know, I think it's like around 35 most of the time. We're just gonna say it averages around 35. Um, <clears throat> and I know there are more scientific ways of testing this, but and I, yeah, I probably should use them, but I'm not going to right now. Okay, so let's change this to has attribute. Does this change anything? No, I think it's pretty much the same. I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty much the same. So then if we go here, and we say, um, let children equal that. Uh, I think let for loop. Okay, I don't know. We'll just use far. Far i equals zero. I is less than children. Length i plus plus. And zero. <laughs> okay, so it takes m much less time, but it fa <laughs> it fails the test. So why is that? Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit nicer. We're not hitting 40 anymore. I mean, the 40 was the outlier. Yeah, so now we're hovering like around, like I'd say 25. So that's a huge upgrade. Let's uh, let's go back, let's, let's go through this other code. Okay, so first of all, let's update our main library. Um, yeah, it's absurd that I'm doing this in two separate spots. Okay, so let's um, let's look for where we're doing any heavy lifting. Um, 
So this object assigned, we're adding, I think that's probably fine. I don't know. I don't want to mess with that. That's nice, clean code. Anywhere here, for each attribute might be able to be optimized. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Okay, so, uh, oh damn. Or wait, how are we including? Uh, okay, well, we're gonna have to go into this. Oh no, okay, we're this is fine actually. We're we're using the for loop. We're not using for each or anything. Okay, so I think those are like like I did most of the. I I did what I can see as the main optimization for this right now. Um, <clears throat> maybe array is array is like not that quick, but like honestly, <clears throat> I think most of the work that's happening here is just like the, the, the loop, right? So I think that's gonna, yeah, obviously make the biggest difference because we're doing this no matter what. Yeah. Um, okay. Because we got to loop through all of the all of the children. Okay. So that uh, that works. We got that. We saved ten milliseconds, which is huge, right? Because that means for like for every thirty-five milliseconds, we're gonna save ten milliseconds. So if it would have been seventy milliseconds, it's now gonna be fifty milliseconds, right? So that's much, much, much nicer. Um, okay, so let's close up shop here. Um, we will go here. We will say like got version one of output JS and input JS libraries working. Awesome. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna go to input JS. What do we change here? We can discard it. We didn't make any real changes. Output JS um, optimized um, optimized. That's a good word. Optimized uh, child element loop master. Okay. I I mean yeah, that's our it's like to say it's ten milliseconds faster is arbitrary. Okay. Uh and we'll just say like op optimized loop. Cause this is old code, so it's you know it's nice to keep it up to date, but it's definitely not you know ideal. Okay. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that's um that's all we got for now. Okay, thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to probably make like a summary video of everything I've gone through so far, uh, just outlining the new libraries. But first, you know, obviously, I'm gonna put together Artify. This is showing, that shouldn't show. Um, I'm gonna put together Artify, make it work, and then I'm gonna use Artify as an example for, um, for this code. Uh, and like kind of show like, okay, you can get this inline edit working, you can get like this toggle working, you can get this online edit working, and then you click the save button, and then, you know, uh, it saves to the server. Like that's kind of cool, it's kind of cool web application, right? And then I'm gonna be like, but what if all of this was done just using data attributes, you know? And then, uh, you know, hopefully people will get excited and be like, whoa, that's cool. Let me have a, my hand on that too. But, you know, even if they don't, that's fine because I'm just going to be building Artify. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you tuning in. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.